Hey there, folks. Welcome to week five of the People Stack Career Transformation Challenge. This week is about taking the leap, that leap of faith to get you really, really, really close to the outcome that you're wanting to, to get, that you deserve to get, that you've worked hard to get, whether it's a promotion, whether it's earning more money, and or whether it's doing all of that while working fewer hours. And I thought that this would be a great time to just give us a quick recap on where we've come so far. So come with me. Apologies for any shaking around or anything like that. Here we go, we're coming over here to the People Stack New Year's Challenge, renamed the People Stack Career Transformation Challenge. Because while it is a New Year's Challenge, it's also a Career Transformation <laughs> Challenge, to remind you where, where we've been <laughs> up until this point. So we have, I'm having a hard time finding a good angle here. Let's, actually that was better before. Let's do that. Apologies. I am not a videographer, as you can probably tell. And I don't have a selfie stick. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Someone wants to get me one, maybe. <laughs> so here's the People, Check, People Stack uh, Career Transformation Challenge. We started in week one with Clarify, then Build It, then Build, then Analyze, then Advance, then Leap. And then depending on what your goal is, whether you want to get a promotion, whether you're on the job market or you want to work fewer hours, the steps vary a little bit. Week one is all about clarifying. Week two is about building, building that network, evan evangelizing your excellence, networking, systematizing, building a workflow system. And then week three, we check in and we analyze, how are we doing? How many advocates do we have? How many leads do we have? How many hours are we working? And then we advance, we advance the conversation, we advance the dialogue to get executive buy-in. We go on interviews, we optimize. How can I work few hours? How can I do this more efficiently? And then this week we're at leap, week five, leap. We take that leap of faith to negotiate, to negotiate, <laughs> or and or to downsize, to actually work fewer hours. And then if you can see week six is celebrating and keeping it up. So this week is, if you're on the job market or looking to uh, get a promotion or earn more money, then this, is, this week really is all about negotiating, um, taking it to the next level. You've gotten to a yes if. You've gotten to yes, I want to work for you if we can come to terms. Yes, we absolutely want you to work for us if we come to the terms. And then if you're wanting to do all this without working your butt off 50 plus hours a week, and this is really about downsizing. It's about saying no. It's about saying, all right, what can I downsize? What can I eliminate? What can I automate? What can I delegate so that I don't have so much on my plate anymore? And so this week, it's really about asking yourself a series of questions. And you may have noticed that that's a theme throughout this challenge, is asking yourself the hard questions, really putting the mirror right up here and saying, all right, how can I do better? How can I take ownership here? Because if I'm not getting the outcomes that I want, the career outcomes, the money outcomes, the promotion outcomes, the working fewer hours outcomes, if I'm not getting that, something must not be working here. And I can complain all I want about external stuff. I can complain about how the job market sucks. I don't live in the right part of the country. I can complain how I'm too old, too young. I can complain how I'm the wrong person that people don't respect me. I can complain about how there's just too much to do in so little time. I can do that. But every minute that you spend complaining about external circumstances that are beyond your control is a minute that you've stolen from walking the path towards your dream. So it's really about saying, what can I do? How can I take extreme ownership here and really walk the path toward career transformation, toward that dream career, purposefully, intentionally, mindfully. So that's what this is all about, is asking yourself these questions so that you can get more clarity on exactly the areas where your career stack, your people stack, your leadership stack needs upgrading. And then you fix it. 
and then you take the steps that are necessary in order to fix it. So if we're talking about negotiation, the hard questions to ask yourself, um, and I included them in the post, so I'm just going to take a quick look so I don't forget any of them. Um, what are the hard questions that you want to ask yourself if you're, 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 on the, uh, you're on the job market or you're looking to get a promotion? So essentially, you're preparing to negotiate. One of the things is you want to make sure that you're prepared for a series of conversations. We usually know it intellectually that negotiation is not just one conversation. It's usually a series of them. It's a series of back and forth. It could feel like tennis or volleyball or something sometimes. That's what it feels like. That's how you know it's working, that you're going back and forth and not just, okay, uh, we'd love to have you work for us and the salary is going to be 150k. Okay, sure, I'll take it. That's not negotiating. Right? That's just saying, okay, sure, I'll take it. So negotiating is a series of conversations of talking about money. Are you prepared for that? Is your mind prepared? Is your heart prepared? Are you prepared? for that. The other thing that you want to ask yourself before going into the negotiation process or even just before walking this path toward career transformation is knowing what is your bottom line salary? What is your walk away salary? Your minimum viable salary? You know, in tech we talk about the minimum viable product. What is your minimum viable salary per year? and you decide on what that is, it might be, let's say 175, 175 a year. And if they don't offer me at least that minimum viable salary, that bottom line salary, I am going to walk away. I've asked and I've asked, we go round after round after round. Are you prepared to walk away? So having those terms in mind before you go into the negotiation process. And having terms in mind for the benefits as well. Not just the salary, because that's not the only thing that's negotiable, and that's not the only thing you're going to be talking about during that yes-if kind of situation. That yes, I absolutely want to work here, I want to add value here, it's going to be a wonderful step for me. I can't wait to work with the team if we can come to the terms. And what are the terms? Salary, but also benefits as well. Paid time off, um, signing bonus, medical coverage, all of those things, including that in your minimum viable package, right? So it's in some ways, it's not just the minimum viable salary. It's about that minimum, minimum viable benefits package that includes salary. And if, it, if they don't meet those terms, are you prepared to walk away? And if you're not, then take a hard look in that mirror, why not? Is it because you're scared? Is it because you don't know how? Because you don't know what to say? Because maybe it's not the right number, maybe it's not the right package and you wanna tweak it a little bit. But really asking yourself, am I prepared to do that? Because otherwise you're not being honest with yourself. That if you have a conversation and you include any loved ones, any partners with you that who, who are part of this for you, and you come to that minimum viable package and you say, all right, this is it. If they don't offer us at least this much, then we're going to walk away. And you make that decision. But if you can't do it during the conversation and you can't walk away during the conversation, what's going on? What changed? And taking a look at that. Another thing to think about um, speaking of how, how do I say this? What do I say? What do I say if they say this? If they come back with, with if they come back to me with a, a number that's lower than I had expected, what do I say? Do you have a script that you can follow that you've decided upon beforehand, and you can hold yourself accountable for that? And is there somebody else who can help hold you accountable for saying that and prep you before the conversation and jazz you up before the conversation? And remember, this is what we talked about. This is what you're going to say. And this is how it's going to go. Do you have a script? Have you practiced it?
Are, do you know, another question is, do you know what to expect during the negotiation process? Are you ready to roll with the punches? Do you have a sense? Have you asked the questions pre-negotiation? What can I expect? How is this going to go? What's the time frame? Have you done all of that prep work? And are you also prepared to have your expectations completely shattered? And are you ready to roll with those punches? And then last but not least, are you able to visualize with crystal clarity what it's going to look like and what you're going to say in order to win the negotiation game? To go from, okay, this is great. It's absolutely a fit to work together. That's the start of the negotiation process to the end of, yeah, I'm in. I can't wait to start on the 15th. I can't wait to start next Friday. This is going to be awesome. Can you visualize with crystal clarity each of the steps along the way? And can you visualize yourself being flexible when the punches come in, when, things, when, you're, when your uh, expectations aren't met? Those are the hard questions to ask yourself when you're going through and preparing to go through the negotiation process. And when I say preparing to go through the negotiation process, too many people wait too long. They wait until the last minute. It's like they have a job offer and some people, you know, come and it's like, yeah, they've given me this number and, and, and I don't know what to do. That's too, that's too long. And if you're at that point, yes, there's, there's still, there's, there's still strategies. There's still a way to approach this so that you're not leaving money on the table so that you're not just ending up in another dead end job where you're only, where you only got a 5% raise. Um, or if it's with your boss, you know, where it's another conversation where they're giving you the runaround and okay, we'll give you the promotion is at this. And they're like, oh my God, this, this has happened to me again. How do we fix it? Yeah, it can be fixed there. But much better to be super proactive here. And ideally it would be, all right, I just landed a new job or I just, I just got put into a new position. I'm super excited about this. And I'm also thinking about that next step. What's next? You know, I just got promoted or I just landed a new software engineering manager gig. This is awesome. And a lot of people say, no, 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 it's too early. I, I, I don't want to think about career transformation yet. I just started a new job. Actually, that's the best time to be thinking about it because it's about a series of steps, it's about a series of conversations. And yes, it's about evangelizing your excellence, but guess what? If you're able to build that excellence consistently, every day and, able to, and you're able to prove it with evidence, with quantitative evidence that you're building that evidence, that you're building that excellence, then evangelizing it and negotiating becomes much, much, much easier. So don't wait too long to prepare for the negotiation process. It's coming. Whether it's two weeks from now, two months from now, or two years from now, make sure you prepare for it. And then switching gears a little bit, this, so negotiation is certainly, uh, you know, taking, taking a leap of faith uh, because it's, it's about that conversation and it can be a little bit scary to people, um, kind of fear driven by some people um, for a variety of different reasons. But that's how you land that OMG job at that OMG salary or that land that OMG promotion. Um, if you're looking to work fewer hours, it's also a leap of faith. It's basically saying no. It's working fewer hours. Okay, let's, I want to work fewer hours. All right, let's work fewer hours. But of course, you're not just going to do that haphazardly and just not go to work one day <laughs> or just like leave early on a Friday or a Thursday when there's a whole lot of other stuff that needs to get done. No, you do it mindfully and that's what we've prepared throughout the rest of the process. But now it's time to actually do it and to, and to downsize, to eliminate, to automate, to delegate. So in preparing to downsize, the questions that you want to ask yourself is, am I prepared to say no more often? Am I prepared to say no to the stuff that's on my to-do list? That task list, that to-do list, that next actions list, whether it's an actual list that you have in Evernote or Trello or in your calendar, or whether you're the kind of person just likes to keep it in your head and you're okay with that. You do have that task list. Are you prepared to say no? to a good number of the things on your task list and on your calendar as well. Are you prepared to not go to the meetings that you don't need to go to? Are you prepared to have those conversations to tell people, this is not my responsibility, respectfully? 
This is not my responsibility. It is somebody else's and I will help you do this. I prepare to say no. And have you decided what you're gonna say no to? Like there may be some tasks that saying no means you automate it, right? Maybe, maybe there's a piece of software or maybe there's an automation process that you or your team can write um, that can do it. But have you decided what's gonna get automated and how it's going to get automated? and how you're gonna work out the kinks along the way. Because as we all know, when we automate something, sometimes it's, you know, it's one step forward, two steps back in the beginning, because you gotta kind of test the automation process and work out the bugs and the kinks in the beginning. Are you prepared to do that? Have you decided what that's gonna look like? And then sometimes saying no means delegating. So it means I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm gonna delegate this to somebody else have you decided what tasks you're going to delegate, who you're going to delegate it to, and how you're going to delegate and do it effectively so that it doesn't end up being a boomerang delegation? Boomerang delegation is you delegate something, but then somehow, mysteriously, like a boomerang, that task ends up back on your desk. Do you have a process? Do you have a system that you can follow so that that doesn't happen? And then sometimes saying no means saying no and you eliminate it and you cross it off. Which ones are you gonna eliminate? How are you gonna deal with any of the potential backlash that happens when you eliminate some of the tasks? You say, no, we're not gonna do this anymore. This is not a priority. We're gonna put this on the back burner. We're gonna table it. And you know what? Maybe we never get to it. Are you prepared to do that? Are you prepared to have the conversations with your team, with your boss, with everyone else to say, we're not doing this anymore? And this comes to strategic vision as well. Do you have that strategic vision? That larger mission for your career and that alignment between what you're doing and your mission and the company's mission and your team's mission so that you can communicate why the heck you are automating, delegating, and eliminating all of this stuff. Can you do that? And if the answer to any of these questions is no, then the good news is we're here to help. That's exactly the kind of stuff that we help our clients with. So go ahead and book a call with us, thepeoplestack.com slash talk, and we'll help you with whatever that is. If you're preparing to negotiate, whether it's gonna happen in two weeks, two days, two months, or two years, we'll help you through the negotiation process so that you can navigate those choppy waters we can't make them not choppy, right? The wind's gonna come, you know, we can't control the wind. We can't control mother nature. We can't control what's out of our control, but we can help you roll with the punches. We can help you have a system. We can help you move forward with confidence, whether it's through the negotiation process or whether it's through the process of actually working fewer hours or both. So if that is something that you wanna talk about so that you can upgrade that skill level, in negotiation, in doing, doing more with less. That's what this week is all about. So go ahead and book a call with us. Or if it's simply that you're not getting those outcomes. It's been too long since you've gotten a promotion. It's been too long since you've only, so, so you've only gotten, you know, measly five, maybe 10% raises over the last two, three, five, ten 10 years and you realize you're not even keeping up with inflation. If it's been too long and you've tried and tried and tried, but it's not working, then that's exactly what we help our clients with, is getting unstuck. Whether it has to do with negotiation, whether it has to do with building excellence, whether it has to do with evangelizing excellence or anywhere in between. We know that you desperately want to make a positive impact on the tech community with your team. You want to leave a legacy that you, that that's absolutely something you're committed to doing. You wouldn't be listening to this if, if that weren't true. We know that that's true. And that's what we're all about. Bringing together a group of technical managers who one day at a time, even though in the past it hasn't been working and they feel beat down and wonder 
if this is for them, if leadership is for them, and I'm never going to get it, and even think about quitting, and oh, maybe I should go back to being an individual contributor. Even though that was their past, we draw a line in the sand and we say, not, a, not anymore. Now we're going to move forward, and we're going to transform our careers, and we're going to help each other do that together. So if that's what you're shooting for and you need help with that, book a call with us today, thepeoplestack.com slash talk. So we look forward to talking with some of you soon. On Friday, I'm going to talk a little bit more about salary negotiation because you know, I could talk about this forever. <laughs> um, there's, just, there's just so many little details in the process. Um, on Friday, I'm going to talk about how much money really are you leaving on the table during the salary negotiation process if you're not doing it effectively, if you don't have it completely dialed in. How much money are you really leaving on the table? And it's probably more than you think. So that's what's coming on Friday. And next week, it's all about the celebration. So many tech managers, so many people skip this step. So we are intentionally making it a step in the process because if we do not celebrate, then what are we here for? <laughs> what, you know, what is the purpose if we're not celebrating our wins along the way, especially the, especially the big ones, even the little ones too. So talk to everyone on Friday. Enjoy the rest of your week. That's all for now. Take care, folks.